I'm going to show you how to make an editable glitch Photoshop animation in just three frames. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here to File, New, and I'm actually going to be working with the film and video. I'm going to choose the very first one, 1920 by 1080, 72. The only thing I'm going to do here is change the background to a black background and click Create. From here, I'm going to go ahead and add the text. So I'm going to come over here to the text tool, go ahead and click on that, and then just click on the screen and we'll type out the word glitch. And I'm going to come over here to my character panel and just change the color of this. So I'm just making this basic white. If you don't see that character panel icon over here, you can just come up here to window character and that'll pop up there. So I am in the move tool right now, letter V on the keyboard, and you can see all of my anchors here. I'm just going to scale this up so that it covers a good portion of the canvas. I do want to leave some on the sides here. So maybe I'll just bring this down just a little bit because I'm going to be making copies of this and moving them around in different areas. So let's go ahead and accept that. I'm just going to select the whole canvas. Command A. If you're in the move tool, you'll have all of these if you have the canvas selected. And I'm just going to center it vertically and horizontally just to make sure that it's in the center of the canvas. Command and the letter D to deselect the canvas. And then I'll show you later on how to uh, change the words and the fonts and all of that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. Since this is going to be editable, of course, it has to be a smart object. So we're going to come here to the text, right click and choose convert to smart object. Now I'm just going to press command and the letter J on the keyboard. That's going to make a duplicate of this. I'm going to turn that off. So this is going to be our base white, but we're going to just turn it off for a minute. OK, so starting with this one, we're going to come up here to filter. We're going to go to distort and wave. For our generators here, I'm going to do three generators and I'm just tabbing over with my keyboard. Um, you can use the sliders or just type this stuff in. It's really, you know, up to you and how you like to work. But for my wavelength, I'm using uh, one minimum, 800 maximum. I'm tabbing over to amplitude and for amplitude, I'm using one minimum and 110 maximum tab over to scale. And for the scale, I'm going to use 30% horizontal and 1% vertical. So here, um, just make sure that you are in square. And down at the bottom, use repeat edge pixels and click OK. You can go in there and adjust this so it's not so harsh. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick with what I've already done. This is going to be legible because we're using this original. So we haven't done anything to that that will be used on the top. So for this one right here, we're going to make sure that that's selected. Command in the letter J three times. So that's going to make three duplicate copies. So right now we have four here and then we have our base. So five total. So what we're going to do with these, if you haven't guessed already, is split our RGB values. So what I'm going to do is just name these really quick. I'm going to double click right here on the name, type in red. I'm going to press the tab key to go to the next layer and I'm going to type in green, tab key, blue, tab, and then this is going to be white. So I'm going to come to the first one that we labeled red. Again, we're here in blending options, that very first option before you get to all of these styles. These are our general blending options here and we're here in advanced blending and I'm just going to turn off here in the channels. I'm going to turn off the blue and the green. We're leaving only the red channel showing. So I'm going to click OK. That's all we're going to do there. And you, it's hard to see right here because we have all these on. If you're just looking at the red, you're going to see that we have red there. Of course, if you turn on any of these other ones, the colors are going to mix and you're not going to see it the way you're looking at it right now. And then we're going to come up here to filter, blur, and we're just going to do a motion blur. So we're going to start out with an angle zero and then actually I'm going to change this to 10 pixels. So angle zero distance is 10 and I'm going to click OK. So just a slight blur. Turn that off. I'm going to turn on the green. Double click over here on the far right hand side. We're going to turn off the red and the blue channel. And we're just going to leave the green channel on. Click OK. Come up here to filter blur, motion blur. And for this one, I'm going to go 90 degrees and click OK. 
go ahead and turn that one off and I'll turn on the blue. Double click again and this time just to make sure that the red channel is off and the green channel is off and we're going to leave the blue. Now I'm going to come up here and add some blur to this as well. So I'm not going to choose this right here because I do want to make changes to it. I'm going over this and I'm coming here to blur motion blur through here and I'm going to change this to 180 degrees. Our distance is still 10 pixels and click OK. So when I turn all of these on, it does change the color depending on how I'm mixing that. And that's because we have these separated into red, blue and green channels. So what I'm going to do is kind of separate them a little bit more. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to turn them all on. Actually, what I'm going to do is just kind of move them a little so I'm going to give them a little separation because they're just stacked on top of each other giving me white at this point. I'm going to use the up arrow and I'm going to press that four times so I'm going to send it up and then to the right and you can adjust this to what you like. For the green I'm here on the green channel now I'm going to go to the left with this one so I'm going four to the left and four down and then for the blue I went four to the left and four up for that one. Grab all three of these layers, the red, green, and blue. That's going to give us our RGB group. And then we have white separate. With this white layer, I'm going to go ahead and press command in the letter J to duplicate that one. And I'm going to bring it to the very top here. I'm going to turn off all of these except for that one. I'm going to press the letter V that's going to put me back into my move tool or you can come up here. If these anchors are not showing for you, just make sure that show transform controls right here is selected. I'm actually just going to uh, hold the shift key and drag this upward and then drag it down. Really, I'm just looking for these vertical lines. Hit return or enter to accept that uh, scale change. So with this, we're going to actually come back in here to filter, distort and wave again. For our generators, we're going to go 600. I'm hitting the tab key. I'm going to the wavelength now. And for the wavelength, I'm going 370 minimum and 600 maximum. For the amplitude, I'm doing one for the minimum, 445 for the maximum. Our scale is going to be 50 percent on the horizontal and 100 percent on the vertical. We're going to keep it with square and we're going to keep repeat edge pixels and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So remember this is a smart object so you can come back in here. This is the last one that we just did so we're going to double click right there and you can make adjustments here. You know kind of make some changes to your scale and see how we got more of these like diffractions here. You can work with those. I tend to work with scale most and I'll leave everything else alone, but that's really up to you. It is a smart object, so you can move it back and forth and play with this a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And I'm gonna rename this fragments just so we know what it is. I'm gonna turn that base layer on. And you can see down here that I already have my timeline open. If you don't have your timeline open, you can come here to window and make sure that timeline is selected here. When you come to this portion right here, if you click on that little down arrow, you have two options here, create video timeline and create frame animation. We're gonna be using frame animation for this one. So when you select that, just click it and it's gonna make your first frame automatically based on whatever's showing on the canvas at the time. So this is going to be our first frame. I turned everything off and I just left our word there that we're using. I'm going to come here to this down arrow and I'm going to change this to one second. Make sure that uh, forever right here is selected. And now I'm just going to press this little icon right here. That's going to make another frame. For this one, I'm going to change this to 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to come up here and turn that one off. I'll turn that on. I'll turn my RGB on and I'll turn my fragments on. So this is what you're going to see in the second frame. Now I'll press that little plus icon again. For this one, I'm going to turn the fragments off and I'm going to come here to the white and just drop the opacity a little bit for that. So maybe about 40% or so, maybe 30. 
So I just wanted to bring down that white just a little bit because it's gonna come back in the next frame since this is gonna be looping. I'm gonna take this to no delay. So I'm gonna press play on this. You can see what it looks like. And then you can add other frames and make it do other things, but I wanna make this pretty simple just for demonstration. But I'm gonna uh, come here to the base layer and then double click to get into the smart object. I'm gonna press the letter T on the keyboard and then just come in here and change the word. I just added a different word. It can be anything that you want. You can make the frame bigger if you like, like if you want words at the bottom, but I wouldn't widen it any more than it already is. Press the letter C on the keyboard. That's the crop tool. Bring this down as, as much as you need it. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as it is. Close it, hit save. And now you can see it's it's put my word a little bit higher up, but I just wanted to show you, you can add you know more space at the bottom. And now I'm gonna press play. It's changed the word but my animation is still there on top of that we have this like on this one right here you can see how this has also changed that's because this smart object right here is based off of the letters and when you're working with smart objects unless you duplicate via copy it's gonna change every single smart object that's based off of the original so all of these all of the RGB and even the white and the fragment up here are all based off of this one smart object down here. So anytime we make changes to this, it's going to change everything. Um, even all of our fragments are going to look different. So it's going to keep on changing just depending on the word that you're using, um, even the font that's just what happens with the change of the word so it's always going to be different you're never going to have the same thing so i want to show you quickly how to export this we're going to come up here to file export save for web legacy i'm going to come up here to the presets and i'm going to choose 32 dithered this animation is pretty basic as far as colors go so we don't really need a lot here we're gonna go ahead and click on save and I'm gonna save it here. I'll actually just call it change, because that's what we named it. Now when I open that up, I'm gonna right click and choose open with, and I'm gonna uh, just choose Safari for this. So if you wanna preview it, that's how you would do that. If you're interested in more Photoshop animation videos, you can click on the card that's up on the screen right now and that'll take you to a whole playlist on Photoshop animation. And if you wanna grab the PSD template that I created here today, go to prettywebs.com. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description for you.